From the very beginning of its existence, humanity has been lied to, in almost every field, by people who blocked its progress. And even today, the atheistic academic science controls the whole world, preventing the real development of our civilization. Humanity is on its knees, as it depends on a group of influential people who have appropriated the production of energy and are demanding huge sums for it. Meanwhile, energy is free for all of us. We are slowly approaching the era of free energy devices, which will completely change the face of civilization and mankind. We were lied to that machines that were heavier than air could not be built, that the invention of the phone was worthless, that the TV set had no future on the market, because who would want to stare every evening at a wooden box? that email is a product that will definitely not sell, that there is no reason that anyone would want to have a personal computer in their home, that the invention of the radio, the wireless music box, has no commercial value. A mass start of the construction of free energy devices would free humanity and free us from the chains of slavery. Once our civilization implemented mechanization based on engines producing energy from the explosion and combustion of fuels, it was only a matter of time before we became the giant poisoners of our Earth. Decades after the end of World War II and after the warnings of a large group of scientists, the real battle against poisoning the Earth was initiated far too late, in the second decade of the 21st century. Unfortunately, only reaching the current level of poisoning and destruction of the natural environment began to force humanity to implement the first combustion-free drive of the third technical era, i.e. to rapidly implement the electric motor invented back in 1836. However, the real solution to the problem of environmental pollution will be the implementation of a completely new type of drive, these will be magnetic drives that will make humanity reach the stars. Just imagine a vehicle that you and your family will be able to use to get to any place on planet Earth within just over 10 seconds, to reach the moon in just a few minutes, and any of the planets of our solar system as if it was a trip out of town. Such a vehicle will soon exist it is called Magnocraft. As a civilization, we are on the verge of building this powerful starship. The country that builds the Magnocraft first will gain an immediate military advantage over all the powers combined and will become the invincible leader of our civilization. First, let us explain where the Magnocraft and the subsequent ideas and inventions that will change our reality come from. After all, like every other vehicle in the world, the Magnocraft also needs some kind of propulsion. Drives are the most important devices that people can construct. They are the machines that generate useful forms of movement, which we later use to manufacture the goods we need, to transport, to travel, to protect nature, apply to devices that make life easier, food processors, saws, fans, pumps, tools, and so on. So the drives make everything work efficiently and are decisive in establishing how much human labor our manufacturing activities demand, how far, how fast, and how comfortably we can travel. Every time when a new type of propulsion system is invented and built, it then brings humanity to an even higher level of civilization. In other words, although we define inventing and building drives, the drives we have built define us as people. Unfortunately, in spite of the enormous importance that inventing and building previously unknown drives has for people, from around the 1970s, the expensive institution of official academic atheistic science ceased to support attempts to build new types of these devices. What's more, the institution of atheistic academic science then began to behave as if people already possessed all kinds of constructible drives. 
By a strange coincidence, it was also in the 1970s that the so-called cyclicity tables were developed, and thus the key for us to discover future propulsion systems. We all know the periodic table and the fact that it lists subsequent elements of increasing atomic weight. That famous table of elements also shows us that, although some elements have not yet been discovered, science is already aware of the existence of these elements not yet discovered. The viewer will probably be surprised, but a similar table and its regularities exist in the field of construction of these earthly drives that we all use. This table is called the Earth Propulsion Cyclicity Table, and it has a huge impact on what world we live in and how our lives look. The first cyclicity table was published in 1976 in the Polish Astronautica Journal and later in the German Raum und Zeit. Its discoverer is the co-author of this film, Doctor of Engineering Jan Pajok. The significance of this first table could only be compared to the proverbial function of Ariadne's thread. In the same way as Ariadne's thread led the ancient hero out of the darkness of the maze, this first cyclicity table indicated, in the darkness of previous ignorance, the path that people should follow towards the future, which would be more moral, healthier and far better for others and for nature than our contemporary present. Like the elements from the periodic table, the cyclicity table drives discussed here will practically never be developed to their ultimate perfection. Still, they will include some previously unknown versions or details, which will require discoveries, thoughts and additions made by subsequent generations of inventors. The discovery of regularity and laws leading to the formulation of the first cyclicity table took place in highly ironic circumstances. It began with the flu, but then developed extremely healthily for the next almost half a century. It was made as part of the scientists' professional duties, but it later turned almost the entire scientific world and their supporters against him. First, it appeared to be a single discovery, but then it turned out to be an infinitely long thread of Ariadne, which repeatedly led us from one discovery to the next one. The propulsion cyclicity table reveals some amazingly surprising truths. In the film, however, we will illustrate only the most significant ones. The first of these truths states that the drives that bring humanity to subsequent levels of its civilization are classified into six basic technical eras. The first technical era utilizes the circulation of physical forces generated by either human or animal muscles as the driving factor. The second of these eras has already used gas cycles as its operating agents. Today, humanity is only at the beginning of the third of these eras in which the working factors are magnetic field circuits. This will be followed by the fourth technical era, in which propelling energy will provide properties of countermatter invisible to people, from which the physical world is built. The fifth and sixth era will be the most advanced. Within it, humanity will be able to control the software controlling movements of countermatter. The second important truth contained in these tables is that drives are always built in matching pairs. First, their engine is built, which only supplies the movement of some components. Then, for each engine, and typically around 200 years later, a corresponding propulsor is added, which produces the absolute motion of the entire device in the surrounding environment. An example of an engine are the blades of an old milling windmill, which moved around an axis, converting their rotational motion into the work of grinding stones that ground the flour. The propulsor that corresponds to the windmill is a sail, which thanks to its permanent connection with the ship, propels the entire ship on the sea, also using the same wind force. The third important truth expressed in the cyclicity tables is that there is a simple procedure for converting any engine into a propulsor corresponding to that engine. This procedure always involves replacing the moving part of the engine moved by the motive energy supplied to it with a stationary environment affecting the propulsor thus obtained. For example, in an engine called the treadmill, its operating principle is enforced by the rotational movement of an animal or human around the fixed structure of the treadmill. 
In contrast, the propulsor in relation to the treadmill is a wheel whose operating principle is enforced by rotating the wheel against a still road, or, to put it in other words, its environment. The fourth truth can be compared to the periodic table. Undiscovered elements are still waiting for their discoverer. Just as empty spaces in the cyclicity table of propulsion suggest that future scientists will invent even more powerful drives, using ever more subtle circulation of motive power. The fifth very important truth revealed to us by the propulsion cyclicity table is that in each technical era there are as many as three generations of its drives invented, characterized by their increasing perfection. Because the first of these important truths reveals that the history of drives built by humanity is divided into six technical eras, let's get acquainted with them and see what awaits humanity in its near and distant future. In the first technical era, the operating factor of the drives built then was the circulation of power. In that first era, for example, the crank was driven by the power of human muscles, after which this force from the crank was transferred to the driven components, overcoming the forces of resistance to the movements of these components. Similarly, the tractive force of a horse was transferred to chariots, allowing the wheels of these chariots to transport warriors and their equipment. The operating factor in the second technical era of humanity is gas circulation. This era began around the beginning of the Middle Ages, with the inventions of a motor called a windmill and a propulsor called a sail. The highest achievements of this second technical era are well-known drives of its third generation, i.e. a combustion engine and a propulsor called a rocket. The principle of turning the engine into a corresponding propulsor was discussed earlier. According to the said principle, when we remove the piston from the combustion engine's cylinder and thus allow the operating factor, i.e. combustion gases, to interact directly with the environment, we then create the nozzle of a rocket, the propulsor of all current space exploration. Unfortunately, the use of particularly destructive third-generation propulsion systems developed at the end of the second technical age and based on the combustion and exploding of fuels is continuing today to the great damage and degeneration of people and nature. The unfortunate stubbornness with which the institution of official atheistic science refuses to rise above the said capabilities of this second technical era brings more and more destruction and the beginning of extinction to humanity. The most important drives of the second technical era produce pollution, exhaust earthly resources, are painfully noisy, harmful to health, people and nature, and their countless moving parts ruin them too quickly, littering the land with their wreckage. It is high time that humanity trusted the truth conveyed by the cyclicity tables, as described here, and engages in creating noiseless and more beneficial engines and propulsors of the third technical era for the sake of nature and people. The third technical era of humanity began in 1836, with the construction of the first electric motor. The operating factor of an electric motor is the circulation of magnetic field. In contrast, electricity is only the source of motive energy. The biggest breakthrough invention of this third technical era will be the construction of the magnetic propulsor invented back in 1984 and called the oscillatory chamber, which then allows the building of as many as three subsequent generations of human interstellar vehicles. i.e. magnocrafts, that move on a purely magnetic principle. Telekinetic vehicles, and time machines. This first groundbreaking magnetic propulsor will complement the electric motor, along with which it forms a pair using magnetic field circulation. For every generation of drives, stemming from every technical era, typically around 200 years after the invention of the respective engine, a corresponding propulsor is also invented. The engine always produces the relative movement of some part that drives other parts. In contrast, a propulsor is a device that induces the absolute motion of the vehicle, just as a car wheel does, which is a propulsor, while the engine only gives motor power to the wheel. Today, 
we are on the verge of the third technical era, where the corresponding magnetic propulsor, called the oscillatory chamber, has not yet been built for the electric motor. This propulsor will use energy to accelerate the vehicle, but it would recover it during deceleration, as some electric vehicles already do today. The oscillatory chamber should be understood as a device for generating extremely strong magnetic fields, with powers that remain far beyond the capabilities of today's magnets and electromagnets. Ordinary magnets produce only magnetic fields whose density does not exceed the natural efficiency of the substances they are made of. In turn, all electromagnets, including superconducting ones, have the disadvantage that the magnetic field they generate forcefully affects the coils of the conductor that generates this field, which, after exceeding a set threshold, causes these electromagnets to explode with a big bang. The oscillatory chamber eliminates all these problems. It generates a magnetic field with use of oscillations of electric sparks and not with the flow of current in a conductor, while its design and principle of operation form two types of mutually balancing forces. One type of these forces attempts to tear its construction apart, while the other kind attempts to compress it. As a result, the chamber remains in force balance and is able to generate an extremely powerful magnetic field, the value of which can easily exceed the so-called start flux, which allows its rise as a result of pushing its field away from the earthly, planetary, solar or galactic field. In addition, the design of oscillatory chambers allows placing one of them inside another. This, by closing a part of their expenditure in the fields circulating within their volume, allows for full control of the part of their expenditure that is discharged into the environment, also enabling such two-chamber capsules to act as energy accumulators of unlimited capacity. Several such twin-chamber capsules made from oscillatory chambers oriented according to the theory of the magnocraft will form the magnetic propulsion system. In such a system, instead of directing its expense from a stationary stator to a moving rotor, as in the case of electric motors, oscillatory chambers will direct their expense from the propelled structure of the starship to the immovable magnetic field of the environment. As a result of such a transformation of the principle of operation of the electric motor, we will come to the discoidal magnocraft already predicted back in 1976 by Dr. Jan Pajok. The full operating principle and design details of this vehicle were elaborated and published in the early 1980s. Construction of this groundbreaking invention will open up humanity's access to unlimited space resources. It will also raise humanity to a higher civilizational level. It is a great pity that the interests of corrupt science and corporations producing commercially available fuels manage so stubbornly and effectively to prevent recognition of the breakthrough potential of the oscillatory chamber and the magnocraft, persistently blocking their construction. If we compare magnocrafts to the primitive rockets and space shuttles of today, they will prove capable of opening a completely new chapter of civilized life to humanity. They move noiselessly. They can both hover still just above the ground and fly at dazzling speeds in space. They are able to fly both in vacuum as well as in the air, water, through rocks, and even in the glowing interiors of stars. They are also resistant to destruction by all types of weapons known today. We should emphasize at this point how harmful it is for the contemporary atheist science to persist in the belief that the inventive process for the next earthly propulsion is driven by fate. Academic science rejects the truth revealed by cyclicity tables, i.e. that the invention of the next propulsion is governed by God's intelligent design and that the invention of new propulsion takes place only when humanity has true freedom of opinion and science, and also when it is at a sufficiently high level of morality.
The fourth technical era was initiated back in 1150 by the invention of the first generation Perpetuum Mobile, repeatedly constructed in India till the present day, called the Bhaskara's Wheel. The structure and principle of this wheel is currently disseminated on the internet via numerous descriptions and videos. Unfortunately, in spite of the almost 900-year-old construction and use of such perpetuum mobile engines by people, the official atheistic science, guided by the interests of energy sellers, bankers and tax offices, still falsely convinces everyone that such engines cannot be built. Imposition of this lie proves to be extremely harmful to humanity. It blocks and inhibits the construction of next generations of such engines and propulsors operating on the principle of perpetuum mobile, as well as the construction of other drives of higher power related to them. The device of this fourth technical era, which will form the biggest breakthrough and open access for humanity to discovering and building a whole series of powerful propulsion systems, will be an oscillatory chamber that fills itself with energy, which humanity will be ready to build around 2040. The fifth technical era of humanity will come in the distant future, when people learn to use ready programs that already pre-exist in the memory of counter-matter, controlling the behavior of this intelligent and invisible substance from which all matter and all objects of our physical world were once coined. The use of these programs will allow us to carry out actions that may seem unimaginable and bordering on miracles today. For example, programs contained in counter-matter will extract individual stones with predefined shapes from solid rock, after which these stones will levitate themselves and position themselves in their respective positions in the wall being built, such as the Inca Wall, pyramids, or stone cities such as Machu Picchu in Peru. In this way, building giant walls or pyramids will look just as it was described in ancient myths, namely, first, by properly tuned vibrations emitting audible sounds. Appropriate programs contained in countermatter will be run, and then vibrations controlling the operation of these programs will extract stones of the required shape from solid rock, and after that cause these stones to self-levitate to their respective places in walls or pyramids built in the future. The skillful use of countermatter programs will also allow us, for example, to change the consistency and other attributes of matter without changing its temperature. Hence, mastering these programs will allow, among others, even the hardest rocks or metals to soften to the consistency of butter or even liquid honey, after which we will be able to carve them freely, even with an ordinary spoon, or cast objects with complex shapes. This last era will begin when humanity learns how to program counter-matter. It will then allow it to make things that today would take our breath away. For example, by reprogramming the thin borders of individual layers from which our physical world is built, we will be able to bend the surfaces along which the transverse waves of light propagate. Hence, we will be able to bend light. In a similar fashion, by reprogramming the time layers that build our physical world, people will also be able to bend space and form portals through which their manned time machines, with people and living beings on their deck, could penetrate to any other time. And by programming counter-matter, they will be able to create matter but not as in the previous generation using ready programs, but by synthesizing matter as if from nothing. For example, stones of the required shapes in thin air. By reversing this process, they will also be able to eliminate from existence objects and materials that they will not need anymore, instead of littering nature with these objects. 
we learned about the six technical eras, each of which contains three subgenerations of increasingly advanced propulsion systems. Let's briefly discuss each of them. In the first generation of each technical era, the operating factor transforms the strength of human or animal muscles or the simplest forces of nature, for example, a gust of wind, in movement. Hence, in the first technical era, that includes propulsion with operating factors with circulation of strength. The first generation of this era directly translates the force of human or animal muscles into movement, thus implementing the operation of primitive machines such as the crank, which is still used today to lift water in village wells, or rafting sticks used to propel the most basic boat designs. In the second propulsion generation from each technical era, regardless of the force energy, the operating factor also releases the driving energy hidden in the inertia. In this way, for example, the second generation of propulsion from the first technical era released the inertia contained in the potter's wheel. In the battle ram, or in the slingshot. In turn, in the propulsors of the second technical era, the operating factor of the second generation releases, for the purposes of propulsion, the inertia contained in the cooperating components of the pneumatic engine, hovercraft, or propeller. After that, the third generation of propulsion from each technical era regardless of the energy of force interaction and inertia, also releases internal energy contained in the operating factor for propelling purposes. In this way, the third generation of drives from the first technical era released the energy of elasticity contained in the spring or ball for driving purposes. In turn, in the second technical era, the operating factor of its third generation propulsors releases, for the purposes of propulsion, the internal energy contained in steam from the steam engine, internal combustion engine and rocket. If we, humanity, had accepted the truth emanating, among others, through the magnocraft and the oscillatory chamber, from the very beginning, we would, for over 30 years now, have been exploring space with silent, cheap vehicles that do not pollute the environment. We would have energy almost for free, and humanity would make such an unimaginable civilizational leap that it could only be compared to the situation 300 years ago, when we were riding carts or on horseback. And today, we are sending satellites to far space. Medicine, science and technology, biology, and our understanding of the universe would make progress that could not be compared with anything. Looking at these six technical breakthroughs, we can see that they always look to the future. They rise up, pushing humanity's real progress. The breakthrough will occur when people overcome the blockade imposed by corporations and atheistic science and finally build the magnocraft and the oscillatory chamber, also focusing on the implementation of other inventions that will finally bring humanity to the stars. Until now, both inventions and other theories of Dr. Jan Pajok were strongly criticized, blocked and ridiculed by atheist academic science which depends on governments and fuel providers. The vision of human development demonstrated by the cyclicity table is an attempt at breaking the creative impasse and apathy in which the lies and corruption of official atheistic science and its concentration on the past and the harmful monopolization of education by utterly wrong theories, such as the theory of evolution, the theory of the Big Bang or the theory of relativity. These are, after all, the theories that deprive mankind of the knowledge of God and justify the greed of its leaders and corporations. If we do not shake off the shackles that we all wear as slaves, 
Soon, our planet will be uninhabitable due to the pollution generated by current drives, machines and human greed. May God help us quickly get out of the trap of the current world view that humanity fell into due to corruption, short-sightedness and the hypocrisy of the official atheistic science and institutions that support the monopoly of such science. We must realize that the Magnocraft and the Oscillatory Chamber cannot be built alone in a garage. They require staffs of scientists and well-equipped laboratories. But first of all, it is necessary to motivate humanity to finally drop the parasites from their own backs and acquire energy for free. This video demonstrates examples of propulsion that prove that the regularities and similarities governing the development of terrestrial propulsion are way too perfect and way too logically designed to be the result of solely a series of coincidences, as the old, official, atheistic science suggests. Therefore, the path followed by human inventiveness must have been far-sightedly designed by God's supreme intelligence. Do we, already knowing what is illustrated here, have the grounds to claim that the truth is officially transmitted to us? Are we, while living in a lie that free energy devices cannot be built, motivated enough to forge a better future for people? Are we mistakenly believing that everything is ruled only by chance, as the official atheistic teaching preaches to us, ready to perfect ourselves, live morally, take care of our fellow men and nature, and follow God's commands and requirements? If no seems to be the right answer to all of the aforelisted questions, is there a justification for tolerating the activities of these costly institutions, which led to such a sick and distorted condition for Earth? Our Creator and Dr. Young Pyup gave me the opportunity to serve the truth and create opportunities to improve myself. With this very amateur and imperfect movie, I wish to honour the unimaginable power of our God for which I find neither words nor thoughts, and Jan Pajok, a man whose discoveries have overtaken our era by several centuries and who has opened to us a thousand doors to the future, even the sci-fi authors have not dreamt of, and who, I am firmly convinced, will be named the number one scientist of all time by generations to come. This is the Magnocraft the most powerful weapon ever made by man. It is surrounded by a static magnetic field. When the vehicle's crew programs the computer to turn on and off the magnetic field of subsequent propulsors at very fast intervals, a powerful magnetic field around the vehicle will be created, which after a while will turn into a hot plasma, which will evaporate any material that is in its range without causing the slightest damage to the vehicle's shell or crew. The country to first build the Magnocraft, even in a single piece, will become the mightiest country in the world on the day the first model leaves the assembly plant.